Welcome back to Praxis Test Prep. If you're new here, we're all about helping you pass your teacher certification exams with ease and confidence. If you would like to join our community of educators, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our test taking tips and strategies. Also feel free to comment down below if you have any questions that we have not answered yet in our video series. Today we are covering the Praxis Elementary Math Exam, that is test code 5003. If that is a test that you need to pass, then good news. My name is Collins Blakely. I'm a test prep expert with study.com, and I'm going to help you and tell you everything that you need to know in this video. We are going to cover everything that is on the test, as well as how best to prepare and my top five strategy tips so that you are ready for test day. All right, let's jump in. First things first, let's start with the basics. Praxis 5003 is designed for prospective teachers of K through 6 elementary school grades. The questions focus on a broad knowledge of mathematics and related competencies necessary to effectively teach mathematics at the elementary school level. Test topics include numbers, operations, algebraic thinking, geometry and measurement, statistics, and probability. So how long is the test and how is it scored? Praxis 5003 gives you 65 minutes to answer 50 questions, so just over one minute per question. So strategy tip number one, aim to spend about one minute per question so that you have some cushion for the more challenging questions. And strategy tip number two with that, skip questions if they are taking a long time. You can always come back if you have time at the end of the exam once you've finished all the other ones, but you don't want to eat up all your time early on on those hard questions. And remember, there is no penalty for wrong answers on the Praxis, so you are always better off guessing than just leaving a question blank. If you have skipped questions, be sure to go back to them before time is up and then make your best guess. That brings us to scoring. Praxis 5003 is scored on a scale of 100 to 200, and in most states, a score of 157 is a passing score. ETS keeps their scoring system confidential, but in practice, we have found this to be about 60% on the exam. We also recommend going to ETS.org to confirm the current score requirement for your state, as this can change and ETS will be able to give you the latest and most reliable information. <sighs> Nearly every question that you see on Praxis 5003 will be multiple choice. However, these do come in a few different flavors, most notably single choice questions where there is only one correct answer and multiple choice questions where there are multiple correct answers. The test will always signal this with language at the end of the question, such as select all that apply, so be sure to read the entire question carefully. You will also be asked to complete a few numeric entry questions. These are ones where the answers are not put on screen, but instead you are asked to solve an equation or a mathematical problem and then input your answer into a numerical entry box on screen. You'll have access to an on-screen graphing calculator during your exam, but please note that you need to use the provided calculator and you cannot bring your own. So strategy tip number three, practicing with a calculator is just as important as reviewing material and doing practice questions. You can practice using the calculator on the ETS website, or you can check out our channel for a video tutorial on the calculator. A few tips for using the calculator. Be sure to read the question carefully. The final answer on the calculator might not be the actual final answer on the question. Make sure you're in the correct mode and don't round intermediate calculations. Rounding too early could lead you to the wrong answer. <sighs> Strategy tip number four, don't spend time memorizing formulas. Yes, you need to know how to use the formulas, but during the test, you will be provided with common formulas, so you don't need to spend your prep time memorizing them. Some of the formulas you'll receive are surface area, volume, and law of sines and cosines. So, we've covered the basics, but now let's dive into some test specifics and what to expect from individual questions on the exam. Praxis 5003 includes three main content categories, and each will include roughly the same amount of questions, so it is important to get comfortable with all three. The first category covers numbers and operations. You can expect 20 questions in this category or roughly 40% of the exam. These questions will focus on your ability to understand and manipulate numbers. This includes understanding the place value system and working with decimals, as well as using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to solve multi-step mathematical problems. 
You should also be comfortable working with different mathematical notations, such as fractions and percents, as well as be familiar with different numerical categories, such as rational, prime, and whole numbers. A sample question might be, what is the sum of the following expression? 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. The second category covers algebraic thinking. You can expect 15 questions in this category, or roughly 30% of the exam. These questions will largely focus on your ability to understand and manipulate algebraic expressions, equations, and formulas. Put more simply, you should be comfortable solving for x. You should also be familiar with inequalities and have a basic sense of how to graph different equations on a number line or an xy graph. And you should also be able to define key algebraic terms such as independent versus dependent variables. The third and final category covers geometry and measurement, data, statistics, and probability. You can expect 15 questions in this category or roughly 30% of the exam. These questions tackle a number of different mathematical areas, but the good news is that you will only face two or three on each. For geometry, you should be comfortable with one, two, and three dimensional figures and be able to solve for perimeter, area, and volume for each. You should also be familiar with basic graphs and with the key components of the coordinate plane. For data and statistics, you should be comfortable with basic statistical concepts such as mean, median, and mode, as well as be able to describe and interpret a set of data. For probability, you should be familiar with the basic concepts around the likelihood of occurrence. A sample probability question might be, you have a standard deck of 52 cards. The first card you draw is the 10 of diamonds. What are the odds that the next card you draw is a diamond? The first and most important step in preparing for the Praxis Elementary Math exam is to learn what the test looks like and what's on it. And good news, you just did that. Next, I want to share my fifth strategy tip. I recommend that you take a full-length practice test to assess your strengths and weaknesses. That may feel like a daunting start, but this way you get an immediate feel for where you need to focus your studying. The results of your practice test will also highlight any areas where you may need to go back and brush up on some more foundational concepts. And don't stress about your score in the first one, all right? It's just a starting point to help you focus your studies. If you don't know where to go to get an authentic full-length practice test, I recommend checking out one of study.com's Praxis Test Prep courses. Every Praxis course starts with a diagnostic test that does all the scoring and prioritization work for you. Also, the questions are designed to mimic the style and difficulty of questions you can expect to face on your official test day. You can even turn on a timer to simulate the time constraints, so by starting here, you are already getting accustomed to the feel of the real thing. And there you have it, my top five strategy tips for passing the Praxis 5003 elementary math exam. If you are looking for more test prep tips and strategies, check out our other videos. We are adding more videos to this channel every week as we tackle more of your questions. And don't forget to head over to study.com and consider one of our comprehensive Praxis test prep courses. If you are looking for more test prep tips and strategies, check out our other videos. We are adding more videos to this channel every week as we tackle more of your questions. And don't forget to head to study.com and consider one of our Praxis test prep courses. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next video.